that and then have a bit of the fire as well sort of in bit that of fire um, yeah. right and, and in a way you can see an awful lot that's that's no longer there <laughs> see if I can find the knife shot though. the destruction but all the, the senselessness of the whole thing mm -hmm. as well and also like the how epic it is Existing there is to be surveilled very heavily, to be suspected of uh, wrongdoing, of deviancy, of, of uh, ideological and physical violence. You get a really different idea of that same space. They see a motorway and they see a park, that's it. And, and maybe some people roaming around. But we got such a different account of that, the way in which people are being contained there and the police surveillance and intervention and profiling. From going there and writing about it, making a film about it, we are producing knowledge about the situation, but how do we go about that in a good ethical way? We sought to get deeper understanding on life in camps, and what we wanted to do was to get the perspectives of the migrants rather than talk about them and make representations of them. We wanted to hear what they had to say. There's a canon of imagery around the crisis that um, deals with abjection and pain and sorrow and borders and police and violence, you know, reaching its apex at the moment that the Alan Kurdi photo came out. The young boy that was found washed up on, on the shores of the Mediterranean. Depicting a migrant in the wake of that canon of imagery is incredibly problematic. The public imaginary has been poisoned by so many of these images. And as such, it's impossible to show someone without the weight of prejudice on their shoulders, you know, written all over their face. The visual material that we ended up sort of archiving was actually a complete absence of, of humanity on a sort of ideological level, but also on like a physiological level. There were literally no humans there, but it was the going into the camps and filming after they'd been evacuated which is the terminology that the police use. There was also a record of the violence and the struggle between groups of people. So in a way, we're working with a completely different visual canon around the crisis that wasn't one of human misery and the huddled masses. It was actually what's left behind once the state intervenes. And that's something that I think has not really been documented in the way that we managed to do it as people that were afforded the privilege of being able to just walk in. Going into that situation and trying to document it visually put people in danger. Like hiding became such an important theme which we really hadn't thought about before we went out into the field. It was so prominent at this time and first we just reflected on that as, as people literally hiding in the woods from the police on a daily basis. Hiding their tents to make sure that they wouldn't get sort of damaged by the police as well but then also the police hiding their presence in a way hiding the violence that they're per perpetrating and us as researchers in a way hiding in the woods you have to be nimble you have to be quick on your feet for all of our, our best intentions we had to make quite profound ethical decisions whilst we were there you know up to the minute how can we justify what we're saying without putting anyone in danger? Is it okay that we show things that, and how they're hiding to show how precarious it is? Or can that be used against the migrants and the situation there? It's no surprise that the jungle was used to be called the jungle. There's, there's some obviously very loaded and problematic dehumanizing uh, language and imagery there. Um, but what we found when we went there was not people living wild but actually people who were heavily 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 policed the issue that we've got is very much a political one the legal the legal passage is there the legal pathways exist but they're inaccessible for some and not for others mm. and i think that's part that's a big part of the problem that's why we see calais it's not because so many people want to come to the uk it's the fact that they can't go that they can't move and and that these routes are inaccessible to them so thinking through all these political and legal constructions was also another thing that we were we were thinking about and we came to the same thing every time the only solution is to open the borders mm.